Good morning, Bethany Christian Church. So, grab a bulletin from the back, and if you have a special prayer request, you can tear off the slip and write that, or if you're a visitor, I don't see any visitors out there, um, the announcements are, I don't believe we have any meetings this week, so we'll just have Sunday school and worship next week as usual. The board meeting is on September 12th, short elders meeting about 4.30 right before the board meeting. Stewardship meeting, I forget it's in September, what date is that? Yeah. Okay, the 8th, <clears throat> something like that, the 7th, the 8th? First Tuesday. First Tuesday, okay. So I think that's all the announcements we really have, except very important to see Miss Christy to update your info and photo in the Seekers classroom, as well, um, there's a new prayer list list on the back credenza okay so if you'll stand for our gathering song will you please join me in the responsive reading how very good and pleasant it is when families live together in unity it is like the dew of Hermon which falls on the mountains of Zion. Let us worship God. We broadcast uh, your glorious deeds, O God, and spread abroad the good news of the gospel. You have not forsaken your people, but promised your presence through the gift of your spirit. In Christ you redeem us from a past that enslaves us and free us for a future of life lived in your love. Hear us now as we sing your praises and fill us with wisdom as we learn of your way. Amen. So will the children come forward and you may be seated. <laughs>
you play On a Friday, you gave me a little more face On a Saturday, you gave me a lot more grace On a Sunday, you gave me the power to run To let my new life shine Nope. Oh, can y'all hear me?
It is so very good to be with you again. And I want to say a strong thank you to all of you for the encouragement that you've given me. First of all, the patience. I'm, uh, I'm not a sickly person. I don't like being sick. <laughs> no, you don't either. And uh, this is the longest I have ever been sick in my life. And uh, COVID-19 is a real thing. I didn't, uh, you know, you talked about it and I danced around it and went to the hospital and saw people and uh, took my shots, but uh, didn't ever imagine that I would have to face it. But it is a, a remarkable thing. In our history of human life, we've all faced some things that uh, in our generations that we uh, had difficulty with. It was strong, it was hard, and uh, COVID-19 is certainly that, and we need to do all that we can in cooperating, working together, and praying together. Your uh, responses to me, the way in which you sent texts, and the way in which you called and encouraged me were extremely valuable. I uh, had talked to people before about uh, the uh, results of COVID-19 and uh, the physical results, the tiredness and all of the symptoms that come with it, which are remarkable, but uh, also the remarkable that comes with it is the psychological effect that comes on. It's a, uh, it's a horrible thing. There is uh, some psychological effects that come with it, and that is loneliness and a sense of despair, a sense of hopelessness. It's strange that they do come, but uh, in my theology, I got to go back and re-examine a lot of books of the Bible, <laughs> book of Revelation in particular, and uh, looking through and think about what God has given us in the way of ministry, why we are here, and uh, you in your own contemplations and in your time of fellowship and in your time of uh, sharing and your time of churchmanship, you've learned that it is being with each other, helping each other and encouraging each other. That is extremely important. I learned that while I was in the hospital, just some encouragements to the nurses and to those who were coming in and helping me because they were so overwhelmed with uh, all of the illnesses that were around them and frightened and scared about what the results would be. And uh, giving them some encouragement is an important thing. That encouragement, that enlightenment that we give each other from the Lord himself to each of our brothers and sisters is what our life is all about. That's why we're here. That's why this church exists. It gave me new visions about why things exist, and that's an important thing. And, uh, being able to stand here with you after three Sundays is me, very important to me. I got excited about being able to be here, and that is a delightful thing. So enough of that, but thank you. Thank you so much for all the ways in which you encouraged me. Those encouragements came from a variety of ways. Thank you for the way in which you encouraged Jody. Taking care of a person whose COVID is also a frightening and difficult thing to do as well. And so, uh, boy, I, I'm looking for invincibility still. You know, when I went to the doctor on Friday, I said, I want a booster shot, so I'll be invincible. And she said, Jimmy, you're not going to be invincible. In fact, you need to be careful so that you don't catch COVID again because you may not be as lucky as you were this time with overcoming the COVID. So there's a lot of people out there that we need to pray for, families that we need to pray for, people who are facing all kinds of difficulty. And those difficulties are surmounted by the other difficulties that come on us. And that is probably best illustrated in Don and Linda Riggs' lives this last week when there's so much else that's going on to have the other diseases and the other illnesses that come on us. And I Don, know that Don is deeply appreciative of your help and your support and encouragement. And uh, Don, would you like to bring everybody up to date a little bit about what's going to happen and what your plans are? Okay, uh, We're glad you're back today.
Thank you, Don. She saw visions of things that we don't see yet. We know are coming. Today we dedicate the service to her in honor of her and anticipation of a memorial service here. Eventually, Don, in our plans. I know you're planning that, too. Thank you, Dawn. We honor her this morning. She is rejoicing in the kingdom of heaven, and we rejoice with her. So many more that are on our prayer list, because I know that there are, all of you all are experiencing your own health problems and difficulties as well, and you've been in my prayers as well as I know that I have been in yours, asking God continued comfort and help as you make your recoveries. And for those who are distances away from us, we pray for them as well, asking God's blessing and help. I appreciate the prayer request put in here uh, Christy, for the uh, sister churches in our area also. They're, they're having great difficulties as well. You know, I've never had trouble before ever getting a pulpit supply. Of course, I don't like to be out. I'm usually never out. But I, every once in a while, I'll have a pulpit supply. But pulpit supply, we're all sick. <laughs> I couldn't find anybody to pulpit supply either. That was difficult to do. So I'm grateful that God, with Christy's help, being able to do the video. Thank you, Christy, for that. And, all that you do in helping our worship make our worship service such a beautiful beautiful thing so many prayer requests any other prayer requests any other prayer requests you would like to make publicly or a sharing of an update that's irritating isn't it blessing God's help. Sight is important. It sure is irritating. I mean, you can't see like you need to see. Anybody else? Oh, good. Thank you so much for reporting to us. Anyone else? Thank you. After two. Of course, of course, any hospitalization. Yeah. 
be sure and call before you go in. When you get their call. Yeah. Yes. They don't want to check you. Yeah. Take your temperature. Anyone else? Yes. God's help. God's help. Let us know. Anyone else? I know there's unspoken prayer requests, and so we lift them up to the Lord as well. Join me now as we pray. Lord Jesus, we do love you so very much, and we ask earnestly your blessing and touch upon the lives of these special ones, Lord, that are on our prayer list and that we've mentioned this morning. All of what's been shared, Lord Jesus, comes from our hearts. You are here with us this morning. Meeting us here this morning is an important part of who we are and who you are, Lord Jesus, and what we will become and what we are yet to be in this world and its witness. What we pray is, Lord Jesus, you'll touch the lives of these that we're praying for and that you'll use us to be able to touch each other's lives and to encourage each other as best we can, Lord Jesus, as days go by, to support each other and to help each other as we deal with the sufferings of this world and join with you in the sufferings of this world, Lord, until the day in which we are all joined together in the kingdom to join Linda. We pray earnestly your blessing, Father, upon the weak. Guide us and help us. And in this worship service, an honoring of you. We love you. Now, even as you've taught us to pray, we pray. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
technique. Reading from John chapter 17, the high priestly prayer. After Jesus said this, he looked toward heaven and prayed, Father, the time has come. Glorify your Son, that your Son may glorify you. For you granted him authority over all people, that he might have eternal life, and give eternal life to all those you have given him. Now this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God, and Jesus Christ, whom you have sent. I have brought you glory on earth by completing the work you gave me to do. And now, Father, glorify me in your presence with the glory I had with you before the world began. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours, you gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I'm not praying for the world, but for those you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine. Glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world, and I'm coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that the scriptures would be fulfilled. I'm coming to you now, but I say these things while I'm still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them, for they are not of the world any more than I am of the world. 
My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by that truth. Your word is truth. As you sent me into the world, I have sent them into the world. I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me through their message, that all of them may be one, Father, just as you are in me and I am in you. May they also be so, may be in us, so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one, I in them, you in me. May they be brought to complete unity to let the world know that you sent me and have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want them, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am and to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. Righteous Father, though the world does not know you, I know you, and they know that you have sent me. I have made you known to them and will continue to make you known in order that the love you have for me may be in them and that I myself may be in them. <clears throat> I hope that you will be patient with me in postponing that uh, series that I began that was uh, a series on the uh, steps that were located on the outskirts of the uh, United States uh, Military Academy. I am going to kind of postpone those messages. Those messages were messages of encouragement and, and of discipline. But the Lord has given me instead something in way of encouragement toward us who are the body of Christ as we endure and as we wait upon his coming. When I first began my ministry when I was 19 years old, I had to counsel those who were going to be married, learn how to do it, and I had a good mentor. Mentor who was my pastor then in Abilene, he taught me how to do some conferencing and to commit myself to that conferencing, which I did. I've done it with every couple, and as a result, there has been a great result. There's been an 80% success rate when it comes to marriage rates, and that success rate is really outstanding when it comes to just the little amount of counseling that's done and conferencing that's done. But it has made a difference, and that's why I've committed myself to continue it. I'm convinced that a little instruction and a little conferencing can go a long way. I believe the same is true for the wedding feast of the bride and Jesus Christ. You and I are waiting for that wedding feast to come, preparing for it, to spend a little time helping to become one, the two to become one, us to become one in him, for the church to become the character, the personality of Christ is wise before the second coming, before the marriage feast of the Lamb and the church, to sanctify us, as Colossians 2, pardon me, Colossians 3.12 says, and as God's chosen people, we are to put on his character. There's some beautiful passages that describe that character. One of my favorite comes out of the book of 1 Peter, chapter 1, beginning with verse 3. Praise be to the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. In his great mercy, he has given us new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that can never perish, spoil, or fade kept in heaven for you, who through faith are shielded by God's power until the coming of the salvation that is ready to be revealed at the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while you may have had to suffer grief in all kinds of trials. These have come so that your faith, of greater worth than gold, which perishes though refined by fire, may be proved genuine and may result in praise and glory and honor when Jesus Christ is revealed. Though you have not seen him, you love him. And even though you do not see him now, you believe in him and are filled with an inexpressible and a glorious joy. For you are receiving the goal of your faith, the salvation of your souls. Our whole life is to be permeated with premarital counseling. I was taught early in those years of getting ready to be a uh, a new pastor and to do the first weddings that I was to encourage couples to do premarital counseling all of their lives. Not just those little conferences that were done in preparation in the wedding for the wedding, but also little experiences 
now and then throughout their lives. And I think that whole thing is also to be communicated as our preparation for the wedding feast of the Lamb. That we are to be preparing ourselves, preparing the world, preparing for that celestial marriage. The greatest of sins is the sin of unrighteousness. God fighting our self-sovereignty, us wanting to be our own gods. And of course, that comes from the very beginning out of Genesis chapter 3, these verses. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from the tree of the garden? The woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees in the garden, but God did say you must not eat fruit from the tree that is in the middle of the garden, and you must not touch it or you will die. You will not surely die, the serpent said to the woman, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. When the woman saw that the fruit of the tree was good for food and pleasing to the eye and also desirable for gaining wisdom, she took some and she ate it. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate it. And the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made coverage for themselves. And then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God, and he says he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day, and they hid from the Lord among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden, and I was afraid because I was naked, and so I hid. And he said, Who told you you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some of the fruit of the tree, and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you've done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate it. We decided and continue to decide day by day in our Christian discipleship that we are going to do what we want to do instead of what God wants us to do. We continue to do that. God continues to encourage us to turn, to repent. As a result of the sinfulness of ourselves, we, our physical and our spiritual suffering has come upon the world. It's come upon us personally, but it's also come upon the world. Physical suffering exposes the delusion of personal autonomy, that we are self-sufficient. We don't need God. But independence is a delusion. Suffering has the power to expose what you've been trusting all along one of the reasons why we suffer with the Lord Jesus in this world, to learn what we have really been delusioned by all along. Sin has left the world in sorry condition, hasn't it? It's in a sorry condition. Our marriage to the Lamb is beginning the restoration of the world, and it's a lot of work. Cleaning up the wedding dress for the wedding, God wants to particularly restore us as his bride, to make this old house a new house. Our struggle is against, according to Ephesians 6, rulers, authorities, powers of the dark world, spiritual forces in the evil places. Character transformation is what is needed. And that character transformation is a daily discipline that you and I do in our discipleship with one another. Transforming the world because the world is broken. We find that out not only in the diseases and the sicknesses that are in the world, but everyday life in the world. We have to learn to balance the tension in wisdom and incompetence, knowing first that we are sinners and knowing that we are forgiven. Be honest. Mourn for the sin. Be dissatisfied and be glad and live anticipating what God is yet going to do. Psalm 51 is the last passage I want to read. and It is a summation of that which is the sorrow of sin in the world and the hope that God gives us of restoration. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions. Wash away all my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you and you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight, so that you are proved right when you speak and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Surely you desire truth in the inner parts. You teach me wisdom in the inmost place. Cleanse me with hyssop, and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. 
Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. And I will teach transgressors your ways and sinners will turn back to you. Save me from blood guilt, O God, the God who saves me. And my tongue will sing of your righteousness. O Lord, open my lips and my mouth will declare praise. You do not delight in sacrifice or I would bring it. You do not take pleasure in burnt offerings. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. In your good pleasure, make Zion prosper. Build up the walls of Jerusalem. Then there will be righteous sacrifices, whole burnt offerings to delight you. Then bulls will be offered upon your altar. In verse 1 and 2, he says specifically to us, Lord, blot out my transgressions, my rebelliousness. Wash my iniquity, my moral uncleanliness. Cleanse me from my sin, my moral weakness. Forgiveness is the biggest step, the first step of that which is restoring in marital, premarital counseling, spiritual premarital counseling, God's sovereignty in our lives. Our journey is meaningful. It really is taking us somewhere, and that journey is glorious. Let's pray. God, we love you so very much, and we thank you that you are restoring that relationship, Father, which makes life worthwhile to all who are your children, but particularly to those who are part of your bride. Help us, Lord Jesus, as we prepare ourselves for that wedding feast that's coming. We pray earnestly your blessing and your help and your comfort, even in these moments that we spend in contemplation. We love you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The instrumentalist is going to play while you sit where you are and contemplate that restoration that God is doing in you and in the rest of the world and through you to the rest of the world of the world becoming the bride of Christ. Lord Jesus, we love you so very much. We ask your